Direct Service Overhead. We know how much trust you put in the individuals who have the privilege of working on the components of your home. We understand that a broken garage door is the last thing you want to be worried about, and most of the time, doors break at the most inconvenient times. Our professionally trained technicians service 24 hours a day, and our high cycle parts are guaranteed to make a noticeable impact on your garage door without putting a damper on your wallet. If you're looking for need of assistance maintaining your current garage door, our team has the experience and expertise to deliver the results you deserve. Give Direct Service Overhead a call today or visit us online to learn more. <laughs> oh, how you guys doing? Happy Monday. Three, two, one. How's my hair? How's the hair? Oh, I didn't even check it before I went live. Oh my goodness. I didn't even that's what happens when you go outside to 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 uh check your check your stuff your car your trash and everything i don't know about you guys we've got trash we've got trash pandas in our neighborhood we have trash pandas in our neighborhood they are um yeah so i didn't actually that's i didn't actually go outside not yet i haven't yet but my hair's a mess because i threw my t-shirt on but i do typically in the morning because i gotta check on those on those damn trash pandas and um See how much oil is left on my driveway. You guys do that? See how much oil is left by your spouse's car all over the driveway? Make sure she's not, she's, her engine's not going to blow up on the way to work. <laughs> all right. Uh, yo, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Picture on Network YouTube channel. I'm Ty Hudson, the owner and operator of, uh, of the channel, the, the PTN. The recently... Uh, Made into a, an LLC, Pig Trail. It's actually Pig Trail Media LLC, but the YouTube channel is Pig Trail Network. Um, t- 22 perfect for trash pandas? I don't get that. What do you mean? 22 perfect for trash pandas. What does that mean? <laughs> Bull bound, go hogs. That's absolutely right. I hope you guys enjoyed the thumbnail. It's my favorite one I've ever... Um, someone actually sent me a picture... I don't know if that's photoshopped, if that's from the university. I don't know. But it's it's Eric Musselman in a football jersey. He just looks intense. Look at the intensity, man. It's legit. It is legit. He looks like he's ready to take someone's head off. He looks like KJ Jefferson right before he runs over an outside linebacker. So I don't know if someone photoshopped his head onto the onto the jersey, but someone sent that to me a while back and they're like, "Dude, this is great." Or no, it was, it was like yes, it was like yesterday. Actually, my bad. I get I get from time to time. I get some pretty, pretty cool stuff, and they're like, "Hey, you should use this as a thumbnail." So I was like, "All right." So I threw it together really quick. I didn't do. I don't. Again, I don't know if that's a Photoshop with his body on the jersey. It doesn't look like it, but I loved it. I love that thumbnail. I was like, "I'm doing it." I'm gonna splash. Since we're still in football, I'm gonna splash that that 
the same thing that I do with the football week, right? We have the half the thumbnail is the color of the team you're about to play with their logo. I was like, this is too perfect. I can't pass up this opportunity. So I did exactly that. Time, my first game on the hill was incredible. Definitely going to get season tickets next season. What an atmosphere. I've been telling people, man, Fayetteville, like even before the North End Zone, like when the when it when it's electric, it is electric. And they have killed it this year in Fayetteville. I don't know how anyone could say any different. Truly. Shout out to the uh, haters in the Mark Rogers comment section who went back and deleted their comments after my uh, interview with <laughs> with Mark. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, just living the dream. I'm wearing my, my powder blue shirt that I got absolutely reamed for the week that I wore it for Ole Miss. Not because of that. I just, it's been, it's kind of been in the back of my, of, of the closet. Uh, and, and I was kind of like, I was like a few minutes before we go live and I'm like, Oh man, I got to find something to wear. And I threw this on. That's why my hair isn't exactly, you know, it's not exactly pristine. But, you know, it's hard to keep these locks settled down. It's hard to keep these luscious brown locks settled down. What's up, Ty? Where are the idiots saying we were going five and seven? Yeah, they're gone. I, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. I said their floor probably is five and seven. But I felt like their ceiling was eight and four. That table got a little bit shorter this weekend. Remember, we talked about how far away that table is. You're sitting at that table, eight and fours on the other end. Got a little bit shorter, but you got to get through LSU this weekend. We have some exciting news for our Discord this weekend. Kind of been working on this for the last uh, couple of days. But you guys have heard of a certain channel that has done a really good job of breaking down KJ Jefferson and Kendall Browse's offense, QB Spotlight. At 10 o'clock Saturday morning in our Discord, we're going to have a sit-down interview with uh, with Mr. Hamner, who runs that channel and has done a great job, again, breaking down KJ. Um, so, yeah, this Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we're going to have Stephen Hamner on from QB Spotlight in our PTN Discord. Now, we're going to do it in the voice channel section hopefully the microphone i'm gonna do some sound test again this week i've had some real trouble uh getting the sound on my end correct when it comes to discord i don't know what the problem is i've got to figure out what's going on with that if i if it is something with this computer then i'll do it on my laptop i don't care one way or another we're gonna make it happen this this pc i have is a little aged the soundboard on it i think something's going on with it i'm amazed we haven't had issues here yet but for whatever reason, when I well, I've been on Discord a couple of times in there, and both times people have said there's something going on with your with your microphone. It's making some gurgling sounds. So I'm gonna hopefully get that fixed. Uh, I've been working on it, but it only happens in Discord, which is weird. It could be a Discord issue. I don't know. Uh, but again, we're gonna have him on Stephen Hamner, QB Spotlight. Follow him on Twitter. He's been in here a few times. We're gonna have him in Discord, Discord only. So if you want to join, the link is provided for you down below in the description box along with the uh, other stuff there. Our sponsors, shout out to them. Direct Service Overhead, they operate out of Little Rock, Central Arkansas, and they, they're up here. Rogers, Springdale, Fayetteville, basically all, most of Northwest Arkansas, as far as I know, offer they're, they're offering up 10% off. If you mention my name or the channel, you can check their link. That's also provided for you in the description box. And of course, State Apparel, who sell the softest shirts in the world, all make all made locally right here in Arkansas. You can check out their entire inventory over at State Apparel. Uh, also, uh, the, the, the link. Just check out the link. Uh, they have a, um, a let's see, where did I where to go? Uh oh, half my page got ripped off here. What happened? What happened to it? <laughs> Rules is yeah. State Apparel. Unique shirts just for you from from State Pride. Funny, sassy, sarcastic, and pop culture. Our shirts are hand-printed on premium material that will leave you feeling and looking great. Our stores offer something else. They have a brick-and-mortar store in downtown in the downtown Benton area for those of you who are in central Arkansas. So, shout-out to our sponsors. Shout-out to QB Spotlight. You guys need to go check out his channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow him on Twitter. Give him a follow. Hang on, my microphone. Let's go. Uh, do, re, mi. Is that better? Is that are we 
Are we better there? Okay. All right, a lot to talk about. We've got Arkansas basketball starting this week. We've got early signing basketball period coming up. Who are they going to sign? What's going on? Are they getting anybody? Is anyone going to sign early? Or are they in some trouble? We'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, but, 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 let me get to comments here really quick. Yo, what's up, Ty? What's up, Kelly Murray? How you doing? Uh, I may have to miss that. Oh, that sucks. Uh, got that late game this week. Going to cook up some some food and catch it after work. Got to love it. Now, keep in mind, um, this is not going to be – right now, my, my – I, I don't know if I'm going to record it or not and upload it. Probably not because we're talking about LSU. I don't want to upload something on Monday or Sunday after the LSU game. So, this is – I would just try to be there for those of you who can make it because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to record it. Not only that I've had, again, I'm having some equipment error here. My PC, I'm going to have to get a new one. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet, but uh, I hope you guys can make it. There's room for, uh, in that discord room, it's first come first serve. There's room for 99 people. I highly doubt we're going to cap out anything close to that, but I would still get there and, uh, and and try to be the first ones there. It's going to be again at 10 o'clock this Saturday, QB Spotlight. So you guys make sure you're there for that. Um, let's see. What's the spread? Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second, Jeremiah. GTS the like, says Cody Phillips. Yeah, make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Brian Frazier, that's great. And please ask the hard questions that has us all scratching our heads at times. Well, Brian, be there and you can ask. Because I'm going to let you guys ask questions too. How about that? You guys can ask the questions that I don't ask. Our goal, we haven't actually talked about how long we can go. I think the goal is at least 30 minutes to an hour. So I'll probably start off with a couple of uh, softball cues and then maybe ask about, you know, what are some things that you've seen so far that you haven't liked? This guy works with athletes, by the way. That's why he's very knowledgeable. This is uh, this is big. I'm really glad he's going to share his time with us. Uh, well, I'm going to just have to knock this job out and be there on time on Saturday. I hope you guys can make it. Cadet Hills is based. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Cadet. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to inform me, sir. Uh, hey, gang. Hope all went well. Fort Bragg is having is having some nice fall weather today. That's that's what you do for us, Ty. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, what's up, Ty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already read that one, didn't I? How long, how long do I get to bitch about Odom calling the same play all game because I'm still a bit pissed behind it? It's nice to have the dub, but sheesh. All right. Well, again, like, subscribe. I, I had people that came through late, and they're like, Ty, I'm one of your creepers. I love the PTN creepers. I love you guys who are active here, but PTN creepers are also cool too. But don't. Don't be shy. Feel free to comment and uh, make sure you make a YouTube account and come subscribe and come join in on all the fun. So, uh, yeah, great win Saturday. So unfortunate for Mike Leach to throw his kicker under the bus. Listen, that's not a first. Coaches do that. I don't, I mean, you know, both those guys you feel bad for. I mean, they were, I mean, they missed some, look, they, they're, th- this to them, this was like their Arkansas at Ole Miss game. No, I don't think they're better than Arkansas. I don't. I don't think Mississippi State's better. It's different. I think Arkansas at the time was better than Ole Miss. I still kind of wonder if maybe they are. I still, or at least they're, in, they're at least neck and neck with Ole Miss. Um, but then you had, of course, the Georgia debacle, which was not even a debacle. It was just a ass kicking. Then, of course, you know, Ole Miss and Auburn happened the way that they did, but I still feel like in Arkansas showed, they showed it against, say what you want about Texas, but they showed it against Texas, they showed it against A&M, and they showed it against Mississippi State. And A&M was at a neutral site. That's not like you were, you weren't in Fayetteville or Little Rock for that. You were at a neutral site. Neutral, I use that term loosely. Um, <laughs> right in their backyard, right in Texas' backyard. But, I mean, you watch that game, and it's like clearly Arkansas was better than A&M. Well, look what A&M has accomplished. You know, Texas is no longer a quality win. It's just not. They're terrible. I don't even like talking about it anymore. 
They're just so bad. Ty, how do we get the red, white, and blue hog? Can't find them anywhere. That's a good question, Ricky. I don't know. Like I said, I showed you guys in Discord mine that I have in my bathroom I've had for over a decade that I got from the uh, from the last time they did that. The last place I ever saw those was, was at this um, – what was the name of that store over there behind where Buffalo Wild Wings used to be on Joyce uh, in Fayetteville? Right right across from uh, the Razorback 6. The, there, there was a little sports place there. They started out in the mall. Then they opened up their own gig outside the mall. And uh, But that was the last place. And I forgot the name of that store. Pro Image or Pro something. They had them. And they had a bunch. And... He claimed the owner said that these were all he was going to get. So I don't know. I don't know where you find. I'm sure somewhere. My guess would be somewhere on campus, maybe if you make your way up to Fayetteville. I don't know. Uh, Bill Bilma totally did that to Cole Headland after TCU. His quote was, "It was juvenile." Yeah, it happens. Coaches do it. Doesn't make it right, but they do it. You know, I'm not. I, you know, is what it is. Cam Little, SEC Freshman of the Week. Was he named SEC Freshman of the Week? I must have missed that. Or did it just happen? Because I don't know. Um, I'm going to pull up. Hang on just a second. D- did that just happen? The stuff that happens when we're live here, it's just incredible. Uh, and I do not want to talk about the Rams game last night. So for any of you asking, I don't, this must have been something that happened yesterday and I missed it. How did I miss that? Did that happen yesterday or today? I thought they normally announce those on Monday, right? Right? I'm not seeing it. Are you? Is that just a suggestion? Oh, he's saying just now. Hang on. Let's just pull up SEC. Uh, SEC. There we go. Okay. Well. Hmm. Okay. We'll have to. We'll see it here in just a minute. We'll take a look. All right. Again, shout out to Patreon supporters. We came up just one shy of our goal last month of 20, but hey, you know what? I appreciate you guys. You know that. How about moving on to the rest of the SEC really quick? Florida fires a defensive coordinator, Todd Grantham. Did not think that would happen. Offensive line coach, also John Hevesy. Both these guys are terminated. Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely a move. I'm sure the AD pressured Dan Mullins to do. I I have no doubt about that. Um, or maybe it's a saving grace kind of kind of thing to make it look like he's he's making moves. That comment about we're going to recruit after the season, I think that was taken a little bit out of context. I wonder if he was saying we're going to talk about recruiting at the end of the year. There's no way a guy like Dan Mullins does not recruit during the season. There's no way during your bye weeks when you're able to have contact. Uh, I don't know that. I don't know actually how that works through the season. I know there's at times they're not allowed to and other times they're not. There's certain days of the week. I think they can't come in contact with the players, but you can't tell me that, that someone like Dan Mullins is not. <laughs> you're kidding me. If you think that like, no way he's, he's one of the most competitive guys I've ever seen. And he lets it get the best of him all the time. I mean, you see him, he just, I don't know, man. I've, I'll, I'll stand by what I said. He's one of the best coaches. I don't know Mississippi State football history that well, but he's got to be the, one of the greatest coaches in the history of that football program. But it's not surprising that he goes somewhere like with the Florida Gators and just has this meltdown. It's not really surprising. I remember him, I remember him at Mississippi State, some of his antics, but they – you didn't really care because it was Mississippi State and he was overachieving at Mississippi State. It was like, yeah, whatever, he's winning. He had them ranked number one in the country for a period of time. I mean, at Mississippi State. So, yeah, they're gone. Yeah. Well, it's not, Kelly says, I'm sure he meant they would talk about, well, no, he didn't say that. I'm saying, I think he's implying that. And he doesn't do a very good job of conveying exactly what he means sometimes, I think. I think a lot of people are guilty of that, you know, especially when you're when you're frustrated. I'm sh- this, But that's what I'm saying. I think he, what he was trying to say was we're going to talk about it at the end of the year. So I think that was a little bit blown out of proportion by people. Like, oh, oh, that's not how this works, coach. I'm sure he knows that. 
I'm sure Dan freaking Mullins knows that, okay? People were going crazy about that. Um, everyone had a reaction to it. I think I might have even had a reaction to it. But after I watched it again, it was like, oh, no, that's not what he meant. Um, Texas Tech, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. This kind of, uh, this kind of news started to, I think, I think it kind of broke last night. Texas Tech sounds like they're going to hire associate coach Joey McGuire. That's from ESPN's Adam Rittenberg. So that was a job a lot of people were concerned about, including yours truly. I thought for sure that he'd be at the top of their list. Does this mean maybe they reached out through agents and maybe there's a, maybe there's negotiations happening at Arkansas where they're going to try and extend his contract? You can't tell me Tech didn't try to reach out to some capacity through proxies. You know, that's how that works. The lawyers kind of act as proxies. You know, the school can't contact so and so, but maybe coaches or uh, lawyers can. I don't know how that works. Uh, maybe the schools can reach out to coaches. I, I don't know. I know they can't reach out to players. I think until they're officially in the portal. But <laughs> you cannot tell me that they weren't interested in him coming there, especially with what Kendall's been able to do at Arkansas. We're going to get to that in a minute. But uh, that's possibly one school off the uh, off the chopping block. I hope this is because Kendall Bryles is negotiating with the University of Arkansas. I hope that's the case. So, uh, how are we not ranked? It's complicated. I, I I'm not I'm not pulling my hair out from it. I mean, I get it. I get it. Should they be ranked? I think they deserve to be there. I think their body of work shows like their losses are to who again? Oh, yeah, that's right. Georgia, Auburn, and Ole Miss. All three of which, I, I mean, just look at look at the rankings the last several weeks. That's who you've lost to. Those are your losses. Meanwhile, you've got, you've got a couple of pretty impressive wins. One of them at a neutral site and one of them at Fayetteville. Uh, you didn't. It's not like Ole Miss smoked Arkansas. I, I I truly believe that people who rank these, who who do the rankings, and I've talked about this here before, they don't watch the games. I, Auburn was clearly that score does not represent how that game really went. Despite Arkansas's, you know, the the mishaps by the Razorbacks, Auburn is not. I, again, I think Auburn, Ole Miss, and Arkansas are like the same team when you talk about their value. Arkansas should be in that bunch without a doubt. Now, LSU is going to tell us a lot because it's LSU, and we're going to go over numbers and stats. We're going to talk with QB Spotlight, but we all know that in this game, just like A&M, it doesn't matter about stats. You throw them out the window. I'm still going to talk about them. We're going to talk about what LSU does good and what they're bad at on Friday, and then we're going to get some uh, clarity from QB Spotlight, who has watched a lot of LSU this year, by the way. Uh, again, this guy works with athletes. If there's anybody who can break down and tell you what he sees and what he likes and doesn't like about these two teams, it's uh, QB Spotlight. And again, we're going to have him in our Discord at 10 a.m. on Saturday, so make sure you're there. Um, I don't know how. I, you know, I get it. I get it because you had a three-game losing streak in the SEC. Uh, you didn't put up 72 points on UAPB. You went into your bye week. You came out and you barely beat Mississippi State at home. Like the optics of it from someone who doesn't actually watch the freaking games, I, I, I get it because you didn't watch the games. I don't think these people watch the games. I just don't. There's a lot of football to watch. It's hard to watch. But Mississippi State is another team that probably belongs in that same group. The middle of the SEC this year is as competitive as I have ever seen it. It's pretty thick. Uh, you know, maybe it's just uh, we don't want to rank too many SEC schools, but we know that's not. They've done it before. We've seen what? How, what's the record? Like eight, seven or eight teams all ranked in the top 25? So I don't know. Um, is what it is, but I'm not going to, I'm not pulling my hair out about it. I don't really, whatever it's, it is what it is, right? Mississippi state wasn't ranked in the AP, right? Right. CFP pill comes out tomorrow. Uh, we beat LSU Saturday. We'll be, we will be in the top 20 perhaps coach. O got them boys playing like he's trying to interview for that head coaching position. That's, uh, opening up at LSU next season. Uh, Dallas Keigel, Andrew Benatendi won the gold glove for their positions. 
Yeah, five Cardinals. Did you see that? That's a first. Five St. Louis Cardinals all got golden gloves. We were we were one missed assignment away from getting two point versus only right. Exactly. Exactly. Arkansas versus UTSA for the for the Peach Bowl. Really cool. Middle of the SEC would beat would be the best of most conferences. I agree. I think a good example would be the Big Twelve. The ACC. I mean, the list kind of goes on. In the Big Ten, we're starting to peel apart that onion and we're realizing, oh, wait, wait a minute. Is it possible that maybe some people at ESPN were wrong about about the Big Ten? I think it's possible. Michigan State, what the hell? What happened to Michigan State? What was that? How did UTSA get so good so fast? We literally had their head coach and OC on our staff two years ago. Uh I would love if we if we smacked LSU. Oklahoma is the most overrated team in college football in in the uh, in in CFP in college football playoffs. Playoffs, yeah, I agree with that. I think they're overrated. I'm not saying they're bad. I mean, Oklahoma probably would be like nine and three in the SEC, but they're still a good football team. They are. I mean, I'm not. I, no disrespect to Oklahoma this year. Oklahoma State, they're pretty salty, especially their front seven on defense. They're pretty salty, but I. Neither one of those teams would have the records they have in the West this year. That's just that is just the God's honest truth, man. No other way to look at it, right? How about a recruiting update? Braylon Russell, six foot one, two hundred twenty five pound, twenty twenty four running back out of Hot Springs, Arkansas, committed to the Hogs last uh, it was Saturday. Right, it happened before kickoff, if I remember right. A little bit before kickoff. It's been noted that at age 15, he dropped a 4 5 40. I'm going to tell you guys, that's not very common. Uh, yeah, so good for the Hogs. That's a, that's a 2024 prospect. So, yeah, the new AP poll came out. Arkansas left out. We already kind of covered that a little bit. Uh, bowl projections, I'm not going to go over too many like I did last week. We'll just start with CBS. Uh, Jerry Palm. Has Arkansas in the Music City Bowl? That is someone who thinks Arkansas. I mean, what what is the Music City Bowl? Was it like seven and five? Is that right? Penn State versus Arkansas, and again, that's a uh, that is a December thirtieth game. And then two four sevens. Brad Crawford, you guys remember him? He actually has Arkansas in the Citrus Bowl, January first bowl against Michigan State. That is someone who thinks we go eight and four or possibly win out. Um. I don't know. I I still Bama's still Bama to me. I know we're all kind of low on them right now because they struggled against Florida earlier in the year. They lost to A and M. Uh, they struggled and probably could have lost to LSU this last weekend. I just Alabama. It's like they're good enough to go ten and one, but they're still not. Or excuse me, eleven and one. But you still don't feel like they're anywhere near on Georgia's level or any anybody for that matter. It's like Georgia is just the, Georgia, and then everybody else is just everybody else. Bama is still should still be favored to beat Arkansas. I'm just not taking that yet. I'm not taking that bait. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Uh, I will take Citrus Bowl. Hell yeah, I'll take Citrus Bowl too. I mean, at this point, it kind of feels like icing on the cake because so many people had Arkansas written off as a team that wasn't going to a bowl game. So, yeah, 6-3 and three at the moment, and you're getting picked to go to the Citrus Bowl. That's a lot of confidence. Um, I don't see us beating Bama. People are overreacting to them having a loss. Well, I'll say this much. They're not the Bama of old. I don't think people are overreacting to that. Um, for sure. They're not the Bama of old. They, they've got some issues. But they're still a Nick Saban coached football program. Like a, a bad Bama team goes 10-2. and two. You know, so I don't know. Uh, Joe, best thumbnail of all time. You are truly a man of culture. P.S. The AP poll is obsolete now because of the college football playoff poll. Uh, we will be ranked tomorrow. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, but I think for, we still give, I mean, there's a reason why we still talk about the AP top 25 though. If we beat LSU decisively, then uh, we may actually have a chance 
Tusky says Bama Bama of old beat us by by thirty. This Bama beats us by ten. Is hog basketball ranked? Oh yeah, yeah, they're ranked. Stub Stub Cup Series dot com. Yeah, they're ranked. Uh, I wasn't talking about you, Cadet Hill. Oh, uh, this has nothing to do with with football. But has anyone ever threw has anyone threw a bowl of cereal on their bed after smoke? All right, Clay. Uh, good luck with you on that. I don't know. I don't know that Bama can beat Auburn. When's the last time you could say that? <laughs> Clay, you need to get a job. So, I'll take, yeah, I, I, I really like Brad Crawford's projection. I just don't know that it happens. Okay, let's move on. Early signing period. This is a bit of news. I don't know if you guys are caught up on this. I think the news kind of broke this morning, or we're finding more and more out about it this morning. Uh, early signing period this year. It's the it's Wednesday, November tenth through the seventeenth. I believe is what I read, what I found online. Um, who's signing early of the five that have committed? Joseph Pinion will sign on the tenth at twelve forty five in Moralton. Barry Dunning, I think he signs. I want to say he signs on Sunday, but Barry Dunning is going to sign. No, no, no. He's on the tenth, and he's going to be at nine o'clock that morning. Probably stick to Twitter. Look at Twitter. Follow him on Twitter, and uh, you'll get a more accurate uh, telling of when he's gonna when he's gonna when he's gonna sign. Darian Ford will sign Sunday the fourteenth. All these guys are ESPN top one hundred players. So, what does that mean for Nick Smith and Jordan Walsh? Well, Nick Smith doesn't currently plan on signing early, and it's unknown if uh, Jordan Walsh is going to. Not saying it's not going to happen again. They have until the seventeenth. Uh. The good news is, I think both of these guys were in the uh, they were in Fayetteville for the exhibition games, so I wouldn't freak out too much because they're not signing early. I wouldn't freak out. I wouldn't panic too much. Uh, if you if you recall the twenty twenty class, what what were they ranked in ESPN that year? Like top six, top eight. Only one of the four signed early, and that was Devo Davis. So I wouldn't panic too much about those two five stars not signing early. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of makes you wonder a little bit. Don't you want to get all this out of the way? Why not sign early? You're seeing that trend with football because football, they can sign in December. What is it? The 15th? Is that what I have written down? I have it written down somewhere. December 15th. Look at, look at the last couple of classes. You're seeing more and more. That's the trend. Yeah, I'm committed. I might as well just go ahead and sign and get it out of the way. It's even better when they can report for spring. Look at what it's done for Raheem Sanders. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, I'm not I'm not freaking out. I'm not panicking. Again, they were both here in Fayetteville for the exhibition games. But, uh, again, Joseph Pinion, Barry Dunning, Darian Ford, all planning. So three of your five. And, look, those three are big-time players. It really feels like Nick Smith Jr. and Walsh are both, like, icing on the cake. It's a delicious cake. You got some talent with those three. But uh, those guys, I don't know about you, but the icing kind of makes the whole thing that much better. So, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely love for these guys to change their mind and go ahead and sign, get it out of the way. I'd feel a lot better about it. But it sounds like they're 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 both very comfortable with the Razorbacks and uh, both love that they're – I mean, look, they're, they're, they're all boys, right? I mean, you feel that much better because it sounds like they're all – they're all pals. So, Razorback basketball season starts Wednesday. The Hogs host the Mercer Bears inside Bud Walton at 7 p.m. this Tuesday. Eric Musselman is currently 19 and one against mid majors. They're the uh, Bears are coached by uh, Greg Gary, who's in his second year. Mercer is in the Southern Conference. Last year, something to keep an eye on. These guys started off seven and one, with a win that included a, a, a dub over Georgia Tech on the road. So they can win away from home. That team last year could win away from home. So um, they ended their season eighteen and eleven, eight and nine in conference play. Again, pretty big win for them on the road against Georgia Tech. So um, yeah. Arkansas, you know, 
I, I am listen. They're gonna rotate guys. Like they're gonna find their rotation. That's what I should say. They're gonna have to find their rotation as the season unwinds. That's how it goes. That's how the last two seasons were. Year one, a little bit less because I think he had, and I hate to say this, outside of Isaiah Joe and Mason Jones and a couple other guys, you know, but you felt like your six, seven guys that you rotated, like from start to finish, that's who you operated with. Last year was a different story. We kind of saw that with Connor Vanover, uh, Note, and and uh, 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 all those guys. You kind of saw them rotate differently. The only one that was pretty steady was Moses Moody, Nick Smith. Kind of had to fight his way, you know, the first part of the season. Uh, did I say Nick Smith? Sorry, Justin Smith. Justin Smith. Um, you know, Jalen Williams found his way. And I think he kind of had some injury issues last year. Are these exhibition games a sign of things to come? I don't think it's worth panicking over. Uh, I really don't. Uh, not yet. I don't really know. I asked you guys. This was our Discord question of the day. Our Discord question of the day, sorry I didn't lead with this, but for those of you who are watching, uh, expectations for Arkansas basketball this season. Maybe 20, 25 wins. Yeah, if you're at 20, that's probably not enough to get into the tournament, depending on who you beat. But yeah, you've got to get, it used to be like 22, used to be the magic number. You know, and that could change as the year goes on. Is it tournament one and one and done, two and done? Maybe they maybe they make it back to the Elite Eight, back to back years, Elite Eight, here we come. Or we're winning the whole thing, Chuck. Jay Haas says I want the whole thing, but he doesn't give me his his expectations. <laughs> maybe that's his expectations. That 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 is it. I want to win that's it. We're winning the whole thing. Austin says, I don't want to be over I don't want to be over optimistic, but I feel like anything less than Sweet 16 is a bust. I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that. I It just, you know, this year you've got a lot of new faces, but you've got some guys that returned. You've only got one freshman on the roster with uh, Chance Moore. Um, I don't know. We're going to have to. Got to, we'll see. We'll see. Elite Eight says one more 24 could win the whole damn thing, though. Big Man Ross, I can't answer yet without some gains under under our belt. That's fair. Dante Marine says, uh, I say 25-plus wins, but our lack of front court depth keeps us from going as far. That's a pretty good, that's a, that's a pretty good take right there. Uh, Eagle says, I'm saying elite eight may, uh, may, maybe ceiling may be ceiling unless they get it together. Right. So I had to correct him in this, in, in discord. Um, if you make, and what I said was, as I replied to this, let me read the whole thing. He says, I'm saying elite eight may be the ceiling unless they get it together. Potential is there, but there are a few pieces missing. I don't know about few pieces missing. I don't know if I agree with that either. I don't know about a few pieces. There might be a couple. But a few, I don't know. There's a couple, and then there's a few. Um, in basketball, when you say there's a few pieces missing, uh, you're in trouble. And maybe that is the case. I don't know. Uh, so I, what I responded to and what I said was, Eagle, you've got it together if you make the Elite Eight, my dude. <laughs> At that point, the other team is either a horrible matchup, which could be the case, or is just that much better than you. And Baylor's a good example of that, right? He clarifies. He says, well, I don't mean... Well, I mean, I don't think they make the Elite Eight unless they get it together. I worded that weird. I'm thinking they can at least it, uh, can at least equal what they did last season if they if they get hot at the right time, and that matters too. Getting hot at the right time—that's exactly that's a good point. Big Donnelly says, "Sweet sixteen, things will be a lot harder this year. We are pretty much back to normal, so I look for all the blue bloods to be back on point." That's a good point too. We don't have the COVID stuff. You know, there's no interruptions so far. Um, we lost, we lost a lot of scoring and rebounding. So when this team meshes will be the real question, right? I agree. Broham says, I think sweet 16 is the ceiling for this team, which is outstanding for the program. As far as conference standings, I'm saying uh, top four. Okay. Um, yeah. When they mesh is a good question. That's a real good question. Cause last year, again, as the season unfolded, as we got deeper in, like, look at your, look at the start of the season versus the middle of the season, the end of the season, and then tournament. 
Look at how they look at how much they changed. Some of it not that big, but some of it pretty big. You saw more Connor, you saw less Connor. You saw less Jalen, you saw more Jalen. You saw more and more Justin Smith. You kind of got an idea and and look, they navigated the uh they navigated the earlier part of the season against some pretty decent teams pretty damn well. So I think there's a, the thing is again you've got one freshman on the roster. Yeah, I know fancy football. I lost. Um, damn you, Matt Stafford. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think that when you look at the transfers, you look at the guys that are there, the new and the old, and all the new faces. My gosh, did you have a lot of guys transfer in? And all of them, I think, are high caliber. I think they're all capable. I mean, you feel like you are in good shape in terms of age, but then there's a newness factor there, right? These guys got to figure out how to play together, and that could take some time. And uh, is that a little bit is is a little bit more worrisome because you know last year you had an outstanding class come in, right? Along with Justin Smith, who we didn't realize how good Justin Smith was until the year unfolded. Um, so you start off against Mercer. Wait, that can't be right. Hold on, let me let me pull. Oh, that's women's basketball too. I was pulling up women's basketball here. Uh, you start off against Mercer, and then you've got Gardner Webb in Northern Iowa. Gardner Webb will be on the 13th. Northern Iowa will be uh, Wednesday. So Saturday is going to be a pretty pretty busy day for Razorback fans. Gardner Webb Saturday, November 13th, uh, 2 p.m. And then following the game, you got Razorback football. You're loaded on on. On Saturday. And then it starts. November 22nd, right out the gate, you're in the uh, Hall of Fame Classic. You're going to start off against Kansas State, and then you could play Cincinnati or Illinois on the 23rd, and then you, you come back home and you play Penn, not Penn State, Penn, on the uh, on Sunday, November 28th. Got five days there to kind of lick your wounds. And then you play back-to-back, I love this, Central Arkansas and then Little Rock. You play them uh, back-to-back, UCA and then Little Rock. December 1st, December 4th, both those games are in Bud Walton Arena. Um, saw a prediction yesterday for us to win the SEC. I think the expectations are kind of all over the place as as we hear more and more of the uh, national pundits talk and you hear more local sports guys and you kind of listen to what Eric Musselman has been talking about. You remember he was talking about having an issue with the ones and the fours, what's going on at point guard. There's a lot to kind of consider here. What's up, Ty? What's up, Scott? How you doing, man? Uh, bunch of new guys. Take a little time to gel. I agree, 110%. A lot of transfers, but they got to play D and pass the ball. So I know that's another thing. He wants more ball movement. Didn't see a lot of that in those two exhibition games, especially game one. Need more, need more ball movement, less turnovers, better transition basketball. I am a little bit concerned that they may be stuck with playing a smaller roster compared to last year. I, I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll have to reconvene really around the time of the Hall of Fame tournament and maybe, maybe even after that, right before you get into conference play. Um, win first week, then any additional wins will be great. What? No, no, no. You got to do more than that. If you're talking basketball, you got to go well beyond that, my man. Uh, Marcus Murdoch, y'all, y'all act like the Elite Eight is easy. It depends on the draw, and that is true. Not making it out of the second round is a bust. Not making it out of the second round is a bust. I would say if we were year five or six in, I would, I would, and that was your expectation was just you know kind of like uh, under a certain head coach that we had before. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I think they should be good enough to make the Sweet Sixteen. I think that you know that was the argument that I made last year. It's a weird position to be in because, and I, and I will say, even though I didn't watch those two exhibition games, everything I've read, uh, talking to people who kind of did get to see some of it, and and there are there are some concerns. There there are some concerns. And again, you have Eric Musselman who comes out talking about having issues at the one spot, which was surprising. Four, not so surprising because of what you lost there. But at the one spot. That's a little bit concerning to hear him talk about that. Then he talked about how quickly they were fatigued earlier in the year, earlier in the uh, I think that was after your first exhibition game. That's a little bit concerning, man. I'm not going to lie. 
But, again, I think a lot of that you're going to get settled as the year goes on. You're going to have to get your rotation solidified. I, I do think they're a Sweet 16 caliber team, just like I said last year. You know, I wonder, a part of that, what someone mentioned, is is very true. You know, there is, there's, there's no, you don't have the COVID interruptions that you did have a little bit last year and how that affected basketball going in and coming out of the season. Things are getting back to normal. You know, and I think the SEC with the quality of coaches, say what you want about them. Say what you want about guys who've been proven to cheat and this and that with Bruce Pearl at Auburn and what's going on at Tennessee and what's going on with Will Wade and LSU. There's still a higher quality of coach. And, uh, I, you know, look, you didn't have too many changes in basketball on that front. So it's not like you're seeing anything new there. But, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just it's a tough year for me to really look at and go, this is what I think is happening for sure. I say Sweet 16, but I don't know. I'll I'll feel a little bit better once we get a couple of weeks into the SEC tournament or uh, SEC during the season, getting a first couple of weeks out of the way. But I'll say right now, yeah, I think their odds of making the Sweet 16, I like. You don't put them in the top 20 and 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 say something like that and that be controversial, right? I mean, yeah, I mean you're in the top 20, uh, and both coaches in AP. I don't think that that's stretching. I don't think you're grasping at straws saying that they should make the Sweet 16. Beyond that, I don't know. And like someone said, it also depends on matchups. I agree with that. Um, oh, did we get the times? Oh, don't tell me they made not CBS primetime again. Did they announce that? No. No. Is that what is that what's going on? Are we primetiming it? Yeah, and you guys are right. Cam Little named SCC Freshman of the Week. I can't wait. We're going to break that down here in just a minute. Uh, we had a lot. I told you, this is a loaded show. I do not want prime time. I don't want it. Not against. I mean, I do. It's nice that you're thought of like that. Again, I can't. I don't know. I'm I'm really bad about finding shit when I'm on when I'm live. If I wasn't live, I'd find it in a heartbeat, but. Uh, I thought SEC Network would have something. I'm not seeing that. Here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah, CBS Arkansas. <sighs> I don't want that. 3:30 p.m. So 2:30 our time. 2:30 on uh, on CBS on November 20th. I just had to solidify it. That's all. I'm not doubting anyone. I just just wanted to double check. Wow, that sucks. Oh, you shared in Discord. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's okay. You like that you're you're thought of, but um, like they think that highly of you. Again, you're making those prime time spots, but I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I kind of would rather 11 a.m. game if I'm being honest. <laughs> Uh, if I'm being honest, feel like we can we can beat LSU, but Death Valley at night is not easy. Yeah, we'll talk about that on Friday. Um, okay, I'm gonna get get into some final thoughts on this game. What we saw on Saturday, I watched bits and pieces of it again on on uh, Sunday Sunday night. Actually, Let's scroll down here. Did we get through everything? We talked about Mercer. Oh, final thoughts on Mercer, really quick. Uh, keep an eye on Alvarez guy averaged just north of about 13 points a game, uh, finished somewhere, I think in the top 12, top 15 in, in that category in points per game, uh, Felipe, I think it's pronounced Haas H A A S E, excuse me, breakfast. Oof. Uh, but he ranked fourth in the conference in total rebounds. Again, it's Felipe Haas or Haas, Haasi Haas, uh, averaged nearly eight rebounds a game. And 6.2 defensive rebounds per game. Mercer ranks fourth on the 2021-2022 conference preseason coaches poll. So, yeah, keep an eye on those two names. All right, final thoughts on this game. And we're going to close it out on this. Uh, Hogs are now 2-0 against Mike Leach. 1-1. I hate saying that. 1-1 should be 2-0 against Kiffin. 1-1 against Kiffin. And uh, 0-1 against... Eli Drinkowitz at Mizzou. I think that changes. I think uh, I think you make that 500 this year. We'll see. You guys know how I'd be. 
I'm gonna I'll break that game down on Friday. We'll talk about it then. Razorbacks in games decided by four points or fewer. Arkansas has lost eight straight, dating back to the 2017 season. So that has come to an end. That's done done and over with. You feel like that's you're shedding off the final pieces of what went wrong in the Bielema era and all the things that went wrong in the Chad Morris era with a stat like that going back to 2017. Uh, MSU, Mississippi State gives up just south of about 90 yards per game. Per game, Arkansas had 80-plus in the opening freaking quarter. The Razorbacks rushed for 200-plus. I'm just going to say it right here. Arkansas is the best rushing attack offense in the country. I don't care. Don't give me this Syracuse, who's third. Uh, I think I think Army second, Air Force one. Look at the body of work and tell me otherwise. Look at who they've played. Look at their schedule. Look at the talent they play against versus who the Hogs play against. And tell me you think they're better rushing attacks. I don't care about the option or any of that shit. I care about what I'm seeing right in front of me. Arkansas is owning it, folks. They are. For those of you who have hated K- Kendall Bryles, I get I'm I'm very critical of his first down play calling and some of his third down play calling. Situational awareness, I've called it. I think he lacks that at times, which is weird to say for an offensive coordinator. But you got to give the man props. You're fourth in the country after playing, uh, you know, a, a, a power five opponent, non con opponent in Texas. All right, there's shit. Okay, I agree with you. Texas A&M, a really good defense, right? After playing Georgia, yeah, nothing happened there, but you still played Georgia. It's still on your body of work. It's on your resume, even if it's a a black eye. Ole Miss, Auburn, Mississippi State. That's pretty incredible. Three teams all ranked in the top 20 in in, uh, total defense. I think two of them are top 20 in run defense or top 25, somewhere in there. And yet you're averaging north of 200 yards a game on the ground. He has done, Kendall Browse has done an amazing job getting this Razorback rush attack going. Um, I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not going to say, again, I've been critical of him. I have. The red zone scoring is not where it should be. I agree with that. But you're talking about the number four rush attack offense and the top 25 total offense. Guys, some of you have forgotten where the hell we were at the last four or five years. Last four, last three or four for sure. You forgot where we were at, and now you're you're not just respectable. You are the best rushing attack that the SEC has to offer, and you're doing it thanks even before you found your RB one this weekend with your plethora of running backs. And I think that has something. There's something to say about that, right? That speaks to the fact that you're able to rotate in and out, change your pace backs. You're able to figure out Traylon, who took the job from Raheem Boyd a year ago. You're able to figure it out this year that, oh, wait a minute, maybe it's Raheem. Oh, well, no, maybe not. Maybe we need to splash in a little bit of A.J. Green. Maybe it's this Johnson kid, Dom John. Look at the depth you have there. It's incredible. Along with K.J. Jefferson. So when you've got KJ and now Dom John, you're talking about hurling 500 pounds of man meat at, at whatever SEC defenses have to throw at you, and the only team that's really been effective against it was Georgia. The fact that you have been able to do what you've been able to do on the ground this year without really a great threat in the passing game outside of Burks, but even with Burks, what are you averaging passing yards-wise? And you are running the ball a lot, sure, but so are a lot of other teams in the country. I think the teams in front of you, I think two of the three have more rush attempts than the Razorbacks do. I think Syracuse is either right under or right above. I can't remember. But, again, look at the body of work. Look at the talent you play against. Look at all the first-round potential, first three-round potentials you play against week in and week out. You're going to get a break here uh, in the next two of the next three weeks, I think. You know, but again, uh, you got to talk about scoring defenses versus scoring offenses, which is what really matters too. But Arkansas has done a great job on offense. And I tip my cap to KB. I hope they can keep him for another year. For those of you who are like, get out of here, I don't think, I truly think you've got short term memory loss or something because he's been incredible. Scoring, I agree. Scoring offense needs to get better. And I would like to see them improve, but it's going to be hard when you. It's hard when you play teams like A and M, Georgia, 
uh, Auburn, Mississippi State, who's got one of the best run defenses. It's it's hard to do. Uh, people act like we're playing against Sun Belt or Big Twelve opponents on defense. Even the bad defenses in the SEC would probably do a hell of a lot better in the surrounding conferences around and outside the SEC. Are you kidding me? Arkansas's killing it. Good for Kendall Bryles. Good for this rush attack. I just disagree with the KB, the complete KB hate of like, get him the hell out of here. I just don't agree. I don't agree at all. Uh, is there someone that could do a better job? I don't know. Maybe. I think it's going to be hard to find if he leaves. So, going back to this game, there was a huge momentum shift going into halftime and coming out of it. Mississippi State ran 24 plays in the bottom of the uh, first half on their last drive and the beginning of their second uh, their first drive in the second half, uh, MSU ran 24 plays, 14 points, ate up close to 10 minutes off the clock, completely kept Arkansas's punishing fast-tempo rush attack grounded, but the Hogs didn't stay down. They came back out and responded with a field goal and then scored six on the following possession after a missed field goal by Mississippi State. The Hogs have found their... Damn leader in the backfield, and his name is Dominic Johnson, a.k.a. Dom John, who rushed for over 100 yards, making it look easy, might I add, uh, and had two scores while KJ played great. You won this game mostly because of Dominic Johnson and Cam Little. Cam Little's got to be talked about. Cam Little, shout out to Fountain. Look, I'm going to give the man props. I am what I am, and I'm just going to call it like I call it and call it like I see it. They've been terrible on special teams for 75% of the time that he's been here. But they went out. They got a damn good kicker in Little. Look at what that guy did Saturday. He's been a big part of this, too. He shares... He shares a big part of why you won also on Saturday, so congrats. MSU needs a kicker. Arkansas found their kicker in Little. This young man has been huge for the Razorbacks this year. So, there you go. That's my rant, and I'm sticking to it. Uh... Again, don't forget Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have QB spotlight in our Discord, 10 a.m. You guys be there. All right. Let's talk about how Kentucky ran 99 plays with 46 minutes of time in possession and still lost. Pig trail uh, that has to be record. I don't know. Uh, but, 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 but it's not pessimistic to talk about things. What could actually happen? You saying you saying Bryles is going to stay here forever? I don't know if you're talking to me. I didn't say he's going to stay here forever. Um, but I definitely would like for him to be here for three years for sure. Fountain also has a Australian punter coming in. I don't like that they're using scholarships on special teams players, but we've seen what's happened with little, uh, Dom John averaging over six yards per carry. That is nothing short of outstanding. You've had a couple of backs, uh, dating back to Felix and Darren do that, you know, but so little is the next Zach Hawker tie. Maybe. I'd rather I'd rather lose Odom than Bryles. Plenty of great defensive minds you can go out and get. Uh, KB needs to leave the damn trick plays out the door. They've I'll say this much. They've been better this year than they were last year, but I agree sometimes. You remember last year he would it was again situational awareness. He would run these goofy trick plays really early in the game and nobody ever fell for him. Again, I'm not I'm not claiming the guy walks on water. I'm definitely critical of him. I've been critical of him all year. Some of his decision making has been at times puzzling. No coordinator's gonna get it right, just like no quarterback's gonna make every read. Okay, it's impossible. It's not gonna happen. Did you watch Matt Stafford last night? Right? Did you watch my quarterback last night? This dude has been killing it week in and week out in the NFL. And he looked like shit last night. Cost me my fantasy game, too. At least Cooper Cup had a good game. Um, I don't want Bryles going anywhere, either. I was just uh, scared because of those Texas ties. Um, Yeah. If KB leaves, the vacuum cleaner... The vacuum cleaner? Who... I don't get that. The vacuum cleaner. Who takes over? uh, KB... Keep KB on board, if possible. They're going to have to. You don't have... This kind of productivity on offense in this freaking conference without him doing something right. And and the good Lord, the development of KJ Jefferson, it's just so much better. And again, I know we got people that want to hate on every read that he makes and oh, he didn't get that read right. He got that read wrong. Guys, you're not look. (laughs) It's first off, it's hard to tell. And I had this conversation with uh, 
QB spotlight. We actually talk on Marco Polo. I had this conversation. He said the same thing. There's no way of knowing if he's being told to do that or if he's choosing to do that. I think he's being told to do that because on first down, when we're talking about those first down drives or uh, uh, drives on first down, when you start out on first down, he is handing the ball off every time or they're running it almost every time. There's no doubt in my mind, Kendall's telling him to do that. Okay, so we're really hard on all of his reads. Guys, we don't know if he's being told to do that or not. But you got to assume that the rest of the game is probably left up to him, I would imagine. Second and third down, maybe. I don't know. But still, the play calling has been, at times, it's just not been there. Dom John, RB1 for LSU. Yeah, he will be. Unless, did they already say that? Johnson will be better than Niall Davis. Boy, no, that is a... I don't know. And it's Niall with one no, with no S. No S at the end of Niall. It's Niall Davis, Mike Wilmoth. <laughs> you know I'm pulling your leg, but everybody does it. Uh, Connor Baker. Okay. Uh, bu- 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 scrolling up here. Uh, we are young, all caps. Uh, yards after contact are beyond phenomenal with DJ. Got to have that in SEC. Yeah, I agree. 110%. I agree, Kelly, for sure. Mullen and Florida deserve each other. <laughs> you might be right on that one. Uh, so you think Dan Mullen get booted at, out at Florida? I don't know. Got a good buddy of mine, actually, that I used to do a podcast with years ago. He's a diehard Florida fan. Goes by the name SoCom Buck. Uh, and uh, he's a really cool guy. I like him a lot. And I'm going to have to tease him and then ask him <laughs> what he thinks. I think he – I'm pretty sure he subscribes to all their their content, like all their boards, all their paid boards. I'm pretty sure he's on the know. So I might have to ask him what he thinks. I, I, don't, I really don't know what they do. It's never a good sign when you're firing people off your staff this late in the year. Uh, they, they going – they going to up the raises for sure to make sure nobody leaves. They're going to try. They're going to try. They're, I mean, you, you cannot let – and honestly, I, I don't know. I, I don't want Odom to leave. I don't. I want to give him – I want, and, and I said this when they hired these two. You need them here for three years minimum to get things – attuned to, 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 to their, to their liking, to what they want to run, to their system, you know, develop the guys within that system, develop the Juco's. If you land any, and they clearly don't seem to really care much about the Juco. I, I wish they would go more Juco route. Uh, that was something Spurrier did at South Carolina and he was able look, man, he attracted Juco talent when he couldn't get high school talent. He was getting Juco talent. Of course they had clowny. But uh, he was a South South Carolina native, but they did get clowny. But uh, that's something he did, and it made their it helped their defense along the way. They were still bad; they had some bad years. But Spurrier understood, like I'm taking over a dumpster fire on defense. I got to go get some older guys. You got to go to the transfer portal now that that's a thing. You got to They're gonna have to. <laughs> I like these linebackers. I do. I like all three of them. I saw, uh, by the way, so I did go to the Friday. I went to Fayetteville. I went to the Fayetteville High game against Harbor. They were up like 35 to nothing. I saw Manny Powell on the sidelines uh, hobbling around, you know, um, on crutches. But I'm going to tell you something. Crutches don't make you taller, right? They just make you, They, if anything, they make you show your true height. That dude looks every bit of six foot three, whatever he weighs. Two, he looks like he weighs about two twenty five, two thirty. That dude is huge. He looks like he could dress up now. Uh, he's going to be here for the spring, uh, and the other two linebackers are going to be here for the spring. So that's huge. But I want them to land. So I want if they go to the transfer portal and if however many they get, I hope they're able to land some some uh, transfer linebackers. So. Uh, quarter Cowboys quarterback coach named person of interest at TCU. God, I hope. Uh, yep, two hundred fifty thousand dollar raise for Pit Boss. That's right. I don't know about the rest of the staff. Did they get anything? I don't know if they did or not. I doubt it. Uh, Will Moss says when Sam and Barry's first class become seniors, they will be great. Yeah, they've got. I mean, they've done a great job. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and also speaking of Fayetteville, watch Isaiah Centennia. He's, I mean, I know I'm kind of 
speaking to the choir here, you guys already are very well aware of this, but that dude is so fast. Uh, Harbor tried to cover him. I was actually walking up to my seat and Harbor tried to cover him man to man with no help over the top. I think, uh, Fayetteville was on their own 30. what they do? They went deep to Santana, but I think it was actually overthrown because I'm walking up the ramp and you can't see they're on the other side of the field. So it, I'm pretty sure it was an incomplete pass, but, uh, I know he burned the guy. I saw him get around him pretty easily. They had to double team him the whole time, and he still balled out. I say a Centennia, I think, is the real deal. I think there's a reason why he's the number one player in the state of Arkansas. We are exactly where we should be in year two under Pittman. We are, uh, for the first time since 2016, going to a bowl game. That's legit progress. Uh, also, beating ranked SEC teams is huge progress. I agree. I agree, sir. When you said Syntagna, you lit up. Oh, did I? I like – look, man, I got some pride in Fayetteville. I love it when these Fayetteville kids come through. Get uh, Gets out of portal, have to be D-line, linebacker, and wide out. Well, I feel pretty good about what they're doing at wide out, but I, I wouldn't mind them going after somebody or tight end. I would say tight end more than wide receiver. Uh, putting the Brett Chad years in the rearview mirror. Well said, Hoyt. I agree. All right, what are we at? 108. Okay, we're, we're eight minutes past the hour. I still think we're ahead of schedule. Yeah, I think they're actually ahead of schedule. If I'm being real, it's very reminiscent, and I'm not trying to say that Sam Pittman is Brett Bielema. I'm not trying to say that at all. But you remember from year one to year two, that's all they talked about was how far ahead of schedule he was in year two at Arkansas. Mostly because of how things went down in 2012 and then 2013 was a little discerning. You kind of thought they would do a little bit better and they didn't. Uh, so, And then that second year under Brett, uh, that's all you heard. That's all you. That's all they talked about. Ah, oh, they're so far ahead of schedule. And then, you know, they, kinda, they went up that, they went up the, uh, the roller coaster ride there. They were going up and then things came crashing down. I'm not saying that happens with Sam Pittman. I don't know. How I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but I certainly like how he's uh, – I like these classes where they're ranked, but there's still some positions I don't know that they put enough emphasis on, and I don't know if they plan on settling these in the transfer portal, if maybe they're going to go full JUCO next year. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still concerned about how they've handled D-line and linebackers. Uh, it has been a concern for mine or for me, and uh, I, I don't – I don't know, man. Um Everywhere else you feel pretty good about, right? Safety. I mean, Miles Rouser, that kid's going to be great. You got Slusher at least for another year or two, probably two if I had to guess. Um, you know, you've got some young faces in the secondary. You've still got guys we haven't seen or heard from much. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact they're freshmen, a redshirt freshmen, sophomores. You know, but when you look at linebacker, I'm still a little uncomfortable there. Defensive line, if you do lose Ridgeway, you're in, you're, look, you're in trouble. You're in trouble even with Ridgeway. Ridgeway is kind of the – like, after him, you don't really know what you have on the defensive line. So, yeah, I, I, there's some questions that need to be answered, and I feel like they've done a pretty good job. Look, again, you get all three of those linebackers. I like all three of those guys. Manny Powell stands out the most because of his size and based on what we heard before he came to Fayetteville and what we've seen, what little we saw of him this year at Fayetteville – he clearly looks like an SEC and looked like he played like an SEC linebacker. You got the other two guys you feel pretty good about. The other one at Shiloh Christian, uh, who I've heard is is vastly underrated. So, you know, we'll see. But I still feel like if you go portal, you need to answer for linebacker, defensive line, and tight end. I don't know what to make of Hudson Henry. I'm, I don't know. I know he's only a redshirt sophomore. He's got time to grow, but I we just – too inconsistent there. Knox has stood out more at that position than he has. I mean, let that set, let that sink in for just a minute. Uh, I can't keep up with football recruiting because the Otis Kirk videos are torture to watch. He's getting a lot of hate this week. I've noticed. Uh, he has a sinus problem. All right. I mean, he's just it's something that's pretty severe. I think he needs. He probably you know I don't know. I'm not gonna hate on him. Otis is a good guy. He really is. Talk to him quite a bit. Ridges, Ridges, no one to be trifled with, son. <laughs> okay. Uh, put another 20, 25 pounds on the frame of Knox. He'll be an awesome tight end. Uh, 
uh, I watched workout. I watched how he did it. Wisconsin, especially three years in a row going to the Rose bowl was awesome to me. Yeah. The fact that he couldn't get it, uh, get it going here is just disappointing. We are, we are Pittman's dream job. Bielema just prayed just a, Oh, just a payday. And it showed after a couple of seasons, it certainly felt that way. It certainly felt that way. I don't know that for a fact. So, all right, uh, that's going to do it. Yeah, all right, basketball tomorrow. So, we will have a post-game show after Mercer tomorrow night. We're going to do it. Any game that I can watch, that I can have eyes on, we're going to do a post-game show. So, you guys look out for that tomorrow. And Saturday, I don't know how we're going to do that. So, I I say that. I don't think I can do a post-game on Saturday until football season's completely done with now that I think about it. I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay, so this week will be Mercer, and then next week we'll cover those games. Uh, We'll cover the – what is there next? Hang on. What do we got? Let's look at the schedule really quick. Mercer on November 9th. Yeah, we're not going to do a post game on Gardner-Webb. Unless something crazy happens, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And then Wednesday, Northern Iowa – and then you don't play again until you play the Hall of Fame Classic on November 22nd. Those games uh, are on Monday and Tuesday, it looks like. And then you're on Sunday, Wednesday. So your next home game after that bunch that I'll be able, you know, on a Saturday that I'll be able to do, hopefully, December 4th. So, yeah. We should be good to go. We, we probably are only going to miss this Gardner Webb game on Saturday. But, you know, we'll have the post game for the uh, for the football game Saturday night. Hopefully it's a dub. So did I miss anything? Trying to go down my notes. Uh, I think we got it all. We got we covered early signing. We did the Discord. Yep, we I think we got it all. We got it all. All right, we're done. I'll see you guys Wednesday, eleven o'clock. You guys try to behave yourselves or don't. Uh, I'll see you then. Woo pig. Go Hawks.